in here today to talk about prayer. Hallelujah. But I hear I, there's a shift here. Because I got to talk about victory right now. And, and I know that we're supposed to be in our praise and worship. And I know that we are supposed to start the service in a specific order. But right now the order has changed. Because I got to talk to some victorious people. I got to talk to some people who are in the middle of a fight. And feel like your strength is getting weak. But I want you to know that he's going to renew your strength. Let me take that back. Not going to renew your strength. He's renewing your strength right now. This praise is not a put on. This praise is not contrived. This sound of victory is real because we stand in the power and the authority of God and we understand that God has already given us every victory. We are more than conquerors. No matter what the situation looks like, we are more than conquerors. No matter the diagnosis of the doctor, we are more than conquerors. No matter what's not in the bank, we are more than conquerors. I want somebody to give God a praise and victory. the weapon maker, then 
and the weapon made by the maker will fail when it comes to my children. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. I'm telling you, this is not just a scripture. This is the word of God. This is not just a writing. This is a promise from the Most High. If my daddy said, if my daddy said, if my daddy said that no weapon would kill me, no weapon could stop me. No weapon can hinder me. I believe my daddy, because my daddy's in control. And I'm not talking natural. I'm talking demonic. So to every one of my enemies, I've been given authority. I've been authorized. I've been deputized. I've been given power to tread upon servants, servants of sickness, Serpents of disease. I've been given the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Scorpions that sting with words that try to hit my heart. You got close to my heart, but you failed. You got close to my mind, but you failed. Every enemy, every enemy, I got news for you. I'm not tiptoeing because you're under my feet. I'm stomping on the devil, stomping on sickness, stomping on my struggle, stomping on depression, stomping on poverty. I am victorious. Somebody give a victory scream. At home, give a victory scream. Listening on, on Facebook, give a victory scream. I believe that I'm standing in my victory. 
glory. I fought the good fight of faith. I fought the good fight of faith. And my faith has brought me thus far. If you would have seen me before, you would have never believed that I could have made it. And that's your testimony too. If they would have seen you before, the situation that you have had to sludge through, the situations you've had to wade through, the waves that have almost taken you out, you thought and they thought that it was your end but God. If it was going the way it looked, we would be in some dire straits. But the way it looked was only to cause me to either believe more or to fail. And I refuse to fail again because I'm not going by what I see. I'm going by what he said. And if what he said goes against what I see, let his word be established. And let everything I see fall. Because every situation in front of me has got to bow its knee to the authority of the word. I said it's got to bow its knee to the authority of the word of God. You better get that in your spirit. Get that in your spirit. When you walk out of here, you walk out of here chopped, full of faith. When you walk out of here, walk out of here with your gun loaded. Loaded and cocked. And get ready to shoot down everything that you were dealing with before you came here today. Did you hear me? I'm telling you literally, you, when you walk out of this place, walk out of here with demons trembling. I don't mind going to the doctor but before I do let me see what my chief physician 
I see some of y'all looking at me. And it's okay. The good thing is you're looking at me. You're not visiting me. You're not waiting for visiting hours. You're looking at me. By the grace of God. And the truth is, you're standing here as a miracle yourself. Your testimony just isn't heard, but your testimony is seen. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Somebody holler victory. Somebody holler victory. Oh, is that how I told you how is victory? How does somebody who won a war holler a victory? I'll teach you about prayer next week. But this week, we are walking in victory. Yeah. So the enemy might as well, he better understand, we're serving notice. See, we're polite enough to serve notice. We're, 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 we're considerate enough to serve notice to the enemy. Letting him know you got a couple of seconds to get your stuff and get out of here because in the next few seconds I'm stepping on heads in the next few seconds I'm pulling down stronghold in the next few seconds I'm toppling pillars in the next few seconds I'm about to pay you back for everything you tried to do you got one second left to step on you for touching my son I'm about to hit you for hitting my daughter I'm about to tear into you for tearing into me and the bottom line is only one is coming out victorious only one is coming out victorious and I got news for the enemy you lost 2,000 years ago should be rejoicing <laughs> hallelujah you lost 2,000 years ago when he said it is finished when he said it is finished it was done sin lost its power and the power of sickness is sin now it's up to us as the as the children of the inheritance to claim the inheritance that has been left to us the problem is we are a little too soft. We're a little too mealy mouth. We bow our knee to the problem too quickly. Well, they said, well, it came back. Well, I don't have. And we bow our knee to the problem too quickly. Well, nobody's helping me. I don't have enough. Well, I woke up hurting. I work up with pain and we bow to these things too quickly but when you see these things it's up to you to stand up erect with your shoulders square and say physically I may not feel my best but spiritually I'm at my best 
and I command my spirit to speak to this body. I command the word of God to be active in this body. Body, obey God. And then start doing what you couldn't do. I don't hear anybody. Well, when you pray that prayer in faith, when you pray the prayer of faith, start doing what you couldn't do. Oh. Hallelujah. I sat back on the bed. 204 over 101. Jesus. All right. Now, God, what should I do? What do you have to say? I'm sitting on the bed. And I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little giddy. I'm not getting really concerned. I'm getting a little giddy because my thing is, how? What are you going to do? Now, if if I take it again and it's still this high, then I'm going to get up and I'm gonna have them take me to the to the ER. But now, what are you going to do? And literally, I got tickled because I'm talking to God like I'm talking to you right now. No, no. What are you going to do? I'm gonna give it ten more minutes. I'm going to take it again. I'm going to calm my nerves. And I'm going to take it again. And I sat back. About nine minutes later, put the cuff on. Put my arm up on three pillows. Make sure my arm is up to heart level. Amen. Amen. Put both feet on the floor. Sat for five minutes taking deep breaths. And I sat there and said, if anybody saw me, they think I'm crazy. And I got tickled. And I pressed the button and the cuff started to expand. And I said, I'm not going to even look at it. And I turned away and I wasn't looking. And when the cuff finally released, I looked. It was 172 over 75. And Marlene, that's why I didn't go to the emergency room. I had, to, I had to speak to my, I had to speak to my oldest sister who's standing there looking. You got, there comes a time, now I believe in doctors. If I didn't believe in doctors, I wouldn't have an insurance card in my pocket now. That wherever I go, if something happened, up. Oh! Amen. But there comes a time when you've got to know what is physical and what is spiritual. Sit down, sit down, because I, 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 I'm already going to mess this whole service up. Y'all, I'm sorry. Stay here. <laughs> there comes a time when you've got to know the difference between physical and spiritual. Take care of this physical. Do what you got to do to take care of them. That don't mean you're going to go crazy and eating anything you want to eat and, 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 and not sleeping and caring. No, 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 no. Stop acting like Jesus is obligated to your foolishness. He's not obligated to your foolishness. I had to tell myself that. Sit him there with chips and, and carrying on and then feel the pain. Up. Well, ain't no up. Ain't no sense of you upping. You're sitting there with Cheetos on the bed. You overcome by your testimony. Amen. And you're making God all these promises. God, if you just let me get through this, I'm going to change my diet. Oh God, I'm going to drink a lot of water. I'm going to work out every day, Jesus. You making God these cracker promises. Easily broken promises. I'm talking to all of us in this room. Then we want to play Jesus as the fixer. While we still got plans for the next couple of hours to go back and get them Cheetos. Because you noticed you didn't throw those Cheetos out. <laughs> you just stopped eating them for a minute. The anointing's still here. 
Amen. But we want God to bless us, heal us while we're still doing all kinds of things. Your, 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 your actions, you got you to have faith in action. Somebody say faith in action. Faith in deed, not just faith in word. Faith in deed. Amen. And so last night, when I lay down in the bed, that devil, that old devil, that old lying devil, that old killing devil, that old cheating devil, he said, if you look in your top drawer, remember you got a bag of Hershey Kisses. He said, go, go, go and kiss one of them kisses. Everybody needs a kiss. <laughs> You're not helping me, Wilson. You're not helping me. <laughs> Talk about, he said, greet your brother with a kiss. And I went and I opened up that drawer. And my demons start talking to that demon. Because you got a demon too. Ain't from hell, it's from you. And I said, I could take one, but like Lay's potato chips, no one can eat just one. For you younger people, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And I had to take that bag and take it outside. Because I knew if I threw it in my garbage, in my room, I'm a sleepwalk. And I took it outside. And I took and dumped the bag into the garbage outside. When I woke up this morning to come to church and went out to get in the Uber, the garbage was dumped over. The raccoons got the kisses. I said, you dirty dogs. God sent the records. <laughs> I say this comically, but victory is something that is methodic. There's a method to victory. I don't hear anybody here. There's some victories that we are responsible for. I don't hear anybody. There are some victories that we are responsible for. But the hold your peace and all the fight your battle. Yeah, but there are some victories we are responsible for. That God will say, if you don't fight, you are going to lose. If you don't resist, you're going to lose. Because I gave you the power. I empowered you. And if you choose not to use your power and your faith, then you're going to continue in that cycle. You'll still be saved, but you're going to stay in that cycle. Because until you make up your mind to use your authority, whatever you, whatever you say you're going to have, whatever you do is going to, make, it's going to dictate whether you get the victory. I don't hear anybody. Amen. Those are the things that we have a, a say in. Our faith has got to speak to. I don't hear anybody. And then some of us die before our time. Hallelujah. Because we don't utilize faith. But then there are some things that we can't handle. There are some things that we can't, we, we can't fight against. Because they're happening in stealth. They're happening in secret. I don't hear anybody. They're happening in the spirit world. And God says, that which you cannot handle, I got you. That which you cannot deal with, I got you. That situation that looks like death, I got you. The things that you've been praying about but seeing no response, I got you. I, I, I got you. 
All I want you to do is hold on and trust me. But I've been holding on. Don't stop. Hold on and trust me. Now, how long? Don't ask the question. Hold on and trust me. Because as long as you trust me, your faith is going to grow. And sometimes those situations causes your faith to increase. Sometimes the added weight to your life causes you to believe more than you've ever believed before. I don't hear anybody here. When the enemy hits your child, it caused you to believe more than you ever believed before. And you went into a trust with God. You went into a relationship that was different from the other relationship. Because it was just you is one thing, but when it deals with something precious, you think you roll up your sleeve and say, let's get to going. I trust in God. <laughs> Dr. Julianne White said, I trust in God. I know he cares for me. Upon the land, on the stormy sea. Come on, organ. Though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches. Oh, I wish I could get that organ to play and stop smiling at me. I don't want your smiles. I want your music. Huh? What? Lord, to help. Y'all pray for the organ play. You better be glad that the Facebook ain't watching. Watch, I've had that camera going on you right now. I, I trust in God. I trust God. And the victory is not coming. It is already won. I had to change my mind and make my mind obey the word and this is not will be and this is not will be and this is the victory that overcometh the world what is it even your faith your faith is the thing that gives you the victory that overcomes the world how many of you got faith then your faith should lead you into your victory I got to stop because y'all are tired. I got to stop because y'all are tired. Your faith assures you of victory in every situation. Amen. In every situation. Take away your carnal mind and your natural fears and go into a spiritual mind. Because your spiritual mind will talk to your natural carnal mind. And say, be quiet. Be still. Just like they were standing at the Red Sea. The Red Sea, the natural mind said, we can't cross this Red Sea. And there were millions of people, we can't cross this Red Sea. And there are thousands of soldiers coming. Thousands of soldiers coming behind us. But there are millions of us, and we're, we're trying to escape. And Moses has to say, let your spirit man take control. Tell your natural man, stand still. You're talking too much. Stand still. You, you're too nervous. Stand still. Quiet your mind. Stand still. Be still. And see the salvation God's about to do. Shut down your carnal thought and get ready to see the miracle. I don't hear anybody. Shut down your natural response and get ready to see a supernatural manifestation. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to train you. I'm trying to train you. Shut down the voices that speak to the natural situation. Shut down the house 
Shut down the whys. Shut down the who's. Shut down the wins. Shut down the where. Look at somebody next to you say, shut it down. I don't know when, but I know you will. I don't know who you're going to use, but I know you will. Y'all don't hear me. That's my spirit talking to my natural. I don't know where it's coming from, but I know you will. Stand still. Stand still and see what God's about to do. Remember what he told Joshua. Sanctify yourself. Because on tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show to you, not tomorrow, which he shall show to you, not in the future, which he shall show to you this very day. show you this very day God's going to prove it to you this very day if your faith doesn't fail for the Egyptian for the sickness for the struggle the problem that you see before you you shall see it no more forever that, that's what the Bible said you shall see it no more forever some of you still don't believe it you've been living with it so long you don't believe it but what God promises that you will see it no more because this is the victory that your faith has won. This is the victory that he has come down and won for you. You shall see it no more forever. For the Lord is fighting for you. While you're asleep, the Lord fought for you. While you were going about your day, the Lord fought for you. And when God fights, he will win. God has never lost a battle. God has never failed. For the Lord shall fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. That means you're going to keep your peace. You're not going to be overwhelmed by the problem. You're going to make sure you hold your peace. You're, gonna not, you're not going to let the situation dictate. Because you know the situation is already under wraps. And you will keep your peace. You will not lose sleep at night. You will hold your peace. You will not let your blood pressure go up. 
you will hold your peace. You will not let fear sink in. You will hold your peace. I don't hear anybody here. Somebody give a shout of praise and I'm going to sit up. going crazy. Hold your peace. Don't have enough money. Hold your peace. Body acting up. Hold your peace. Problem on the job. Keep your peace. Spouse going crazy. Keep your peace. Because victory belongs to you.